Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you all for being here tonight. And it's a really nice, intimate group, and just so happy to have had a, a little bit of time to meet some of you. And just thank you all for coming here tonight. We really appreciate it. My name is Patty Boyle, and I'm the Assistant Deputy Minister of the, of the Child Care Division uh, for the Ministry of Education and Child Care. And before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge uh, that we're very grateful to host our dinner today um, and our awards this evening on the traditional and unceded territory of the Musqueam Nation. So to, to help us welcome us to this territory, acknowledge this territory, and to begin in the right way, I'd like to welcome to the podium Musqueam Elder Mary Point. Mary? Haitka siam haitka. Asiam nasiaya, asiam nasiaya, and the Mary Point, Tinitsina humathquiam, Ami zep quitquilum, ear to e malsum, malsum. In the language of my ancestors, I let you know my name is Mary Point. I'm from Musqueam, and I welcomed you in the way in which I've been taught to do. And I let you know that today we're sitting in an area that we call the place of the blueberries. It's a place where we would actually come and gather. It grew so densely here on this island in the Delta. Um, my family, the Point family, uh, hails from the village of Quayach. Quayach, for those of you who know this area of Richmond, is actually been renamed as Gary Point in Steveston, renamed by Captain Vancouver, who, like the Spanish before him, just uh, named, renamed places after their friends and compadres. Um, I, um, I'm very pleased to be here with uh, child care workers. To me, Children are, are, have always filled my heart. I thought I would have six of them at least, but I only ever had one. Uh, but our house uh, growing up and also when I was raising my son here in Richmond was always the place where people dropped their children off to hang out. We did have an informal daycare, I'll say. I was also a foster parent for six years and uh, had 36 children during that time and actually got an award from the province for outstanding service to foster children. Uh, but uh, that was way back in the 90s, so it isn't like these, uh, this prestigious thing. I think it was just something that came in the mail or was handed to me by our social worker. Uh, but, um, but I'm really pleased to be here because uh, my uh, daughter-in-law, who lives with me along with my son and my two grandchildren and their three dogs, uh, my daughter-in-law uh, got her ACE uh, certificate last year, and she's uh, back at school while working at a local daycare here. Um, she's um, working towards the full degree. So I'm really excited for her, and I, I learn a lot more about all the formalities of raising children so different from... <laughs> how oh, I might have handled it, uh, not, so, not so strategically, more make them go in a line or keep them busy. <laughs> so teach them lots and lots of songs, I would say. We always would have book or dance before bed, but I, dis I digress. So uh, I don't want to take up too much time. I'm mindful while I'm here uh, that we're a few days from... Um, Indigenous History Month, which begins on June 1st. Uh, it's also, June 1st is also uh, Pride Day internationally, so um, we, I work at the airport and we celebrate both of those at the same time, and we actually raise the Musqueam Pride flags uh, at that time as well as, uh, as, well as uh, standard Pride flags, and we have all kinds of uh, activities that we do. But uh, for Indigenous History Month, it's a very busy time uh, because I find these are the times when uh, people maybe pay a little bit more attention to uh, this time of learning and reconciliation. 
And uh, of course, I would be remiss if I didn't say uh, I'm aware the province uh, adopted uh, the uh, United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and, uh, and also uh, have a whole section dedicated to um, the truth and reconciliation calls to action. And I know those are a lot to unpack for most, uh, but right in the very first words begin with legacy. What is the story that you want to tell? And the very first section is on child welfare. And I think about all of the good work that's being done uh, to care for children now, and all the work that is yet to be done to ensure that uh, our children, not just our indigenous children, but all of our children are taken care of in a good way. Um, the calls to action, I'll just say, uh, in this time of learning, uh, once we move past the importance of looking after our children and families, uh, focuses on education, uh, professional development, updating business policies, commemorating the children, and in, in, incorporates the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and, um, and the uh, calls for justice, the 231 calls for justice for the murdered and missing Indigenous women and girls. Um, and I just think, of, when I think about all of those things and all of the work that's being done and the month that is ahead where we'll be uh, exploring and learning more about the history and unpacking what we can and making our decisions about how we can do better, uh, I, I really look to leaders like those who are in this room, those who are excelling at looking after children, early childhood learning, uh, are, are all the way to graduation. Uh, you're inspiring them and, and helping them to unpack difficult subjects as well as fun ones and, uh, and helping them grow into future leaders themselves. So we have a, a saying in our community, I Tanashkwalawan Kunzi Kutsnala. My heart is full when I think about the work that you're doing and, and all of, of those who are getting awards for doing that good work this evening. So to get us started in a good way, I'm going to share a song that comes from Kwayach. It comes from my great uncle Dominic Point, his traditional name Tiakthet. It's our Musqueam paddle song, which you may have heard uh, if you've been anywhere in Musqueam territory. It's a song that we sing when we're entering a new community to let people know we're coming with good intentions. And it's a song that we sing when we're standing in community to share a little bit about who we are. And it's a song that we sing at the beginning of any new journey, a wedding, a funeral, a graduation, or days like today as we journey into these awards of excellence and celebrate your total awesomeness. Uh, so I'll also sing it for our children. And, uh, and because it's a song of the land, I have two people already committed to sing with me. Well, one voluntold and one committed. <laughs> but um, so I'm going to sing it once, and then I'll sing it again, and maybe you'll join in. And you guys can jump in right from the beginning. Yo. <laughs> Hey. 
Bonanno I excellent. So many good singers in the room. Uh, our elders tell us that when we're out on the water, they sing it over and over and over again until the ancestors come and sit with us. Uh, but that's all that I have to share with you this evening. One last teaching, maybe. I want to raise my hands uh, to each and every one of the award winners and all the hands that put the work in for this beautiful evening. And the reason why we do that is I feel lifted up to be here with you, and I want to lift you up in return. Hi, Sepka. Thank you all. Congratulations, winners. Thank you so much, Mary, for those, those uh, words. And I raise my hands up to you just for all that you've done. Um, just looking back and what I was thinking as you were talking about, you know, someone who took care of children, you know, in the foster care must have really imparted something to your family to make your daughter-in-law want to become an early childhood educator years later. So we all raise our hands up to you for that wonderful welcome. Thank you so much. And welcome everybody to the evening. Uh, just a few quick housekeeping notes uh, before we start our dinner. Um, if everybody didn't get a name tag, name badge, I think you did because I think I made my way around the room and saw that and Tiffany's nodding and Fiona's nodding that you all got your name badges, so that's great. So dinner will begin just as soon as I'm finished up here and we'll include an appetizer, an entree and a dessert. And we did have Rogner from our uh, stakeholder engagement team, who used to be a waiter, actually go through the menu and tell us all about it. And I said, I might bring you up to actually, you know, talk as you would with, as a waiter with the different choices, but he said he maybe would hold off on that for now. So <laughs> <laughs> I won't make him do that. But there's a cash bar at the back of the room with alcoholic drinks available if you're interested. And you can also order complimentary soft drinks um, and juice at the bar as well. So uh, just a quick reminder that the event will be recorded. We see that it's being recorded right now. Um, so I think everybody's in their seats and just relax and enjoy the dinner. Um, and then we'll be calling on our, our minister to come up and greet you all after dinner today. So please just enjoy dinner, everyone. And, and uh, I'll be coming around to your tables too and seeing what you chose and seeing if I chose the same thing. But, but really enjoy today, okay? Thank you, everybody. Hey everyone, well I think we'll get started again, finish up the conversations. How was the dinner? Was it okay? Yeah? I hope you had some great conversation at your tables. I, I was at this table and uh, found out that about half of us are from Saskatchewan. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and one in the back! Yahoo! Oh, yeah, of course, right? Yeah, I have a Saskatchewan Rough Rider sweater for my dog as well, but I don't always, I don't always put it on him when I'm around the, you know, the BC Lions, but um, yeah, so I, I guess it just tells me that it really is the center of the universe, Saskatchewan, because we're, a, but we, but we realize that it's a nice place to be from, yeah. So just, um, uh, just ex you know, we're just wanted to say that we're excited really here to be here today to celebrate the child. Uh, Care BC Awards of Excellence winners um, and appreciate you for really taking the time out of your schedules to come acro from across the province uh, to be here with us tonight. We're here tonight to really celebrate you, um, your incredible achievements and the tr tremendous impact you've had on our, your communities, on children and families all across this province. And for that, uh, we really want to say thank you and a heartfelt thank you to all of you. Um, so without further ado, uh, let's begin the award ceremony. And I'd like to take this time and opportunity to welcome to the podium our host for the evening, uh, Minister of State for Child Care, Grace Lohr. Good evening, folks. I am very grateful to have a chance, to have had the chance to sit at a couple tables, so I'll have to come visit this table next. I'm uh, 
really, really glad to be here with you tonight. I've been in this role since December, and I've had uh, more of an opportunity in the last few weeks to get out in community and connect with educators and providers. And I have learned so much and had such incredible conversations that I am, I'm going to be able to take back with me to this work. And tonight is a continuation of that to really have the chance to connect with those of you who are really fundamentally making change in the sector, who are serving communities and families, and to, to take the time to recognize and celebrate that. We are, uh, as um, Patty said and as Mary welcomed us to, on the territory of the Musqueam Nation and the Coast Salish peoples. I really appreciated Mary's um, uh, welcome and some of the comments she shared on uh, kids in her uh, house and in, welcomed into her home and, and uh, the career path of her daughter-in-law. I know uh, many of you traveled uh, quite far to join us, and I'm really, really glad that you did. I also want to thank the ministry staff who are here, who made this possible, and who do this work uh, with us um, you know, every day as we look to build childcare as a core service here in BC. Those of you who are here really have gone above and beyond every day to make life better for children and for families and for your communities, offering culturally meaningful care that reflects the diverse cultural landscape of our province, supporting kids with diverse needs in an inclusive way, and supporting others in the field, uh, with, which is so essential. I hear so much about the needs for connection uh, between educators and providers and, and the learning that happens there. You really are the heart and soul of childcare in our province, and all the work that we do as government, all the work that I'm privileged to do as Minister of State, uh, really only hits the road rubber hits the road, I'm going to not use a great uh, metaphor here, but really with you in community, that's where it really happens. We are five years into our Child Care BC plan uh, with a vision of making child care more affordable, accessible, and inclusive for families in our province. And I so believe in that vision, and I know that access to child care is life-changing for families. Um, but again, it is you, the skilled, educated, and dedicated professionals who provide that care, who provide the connection and the learning opportunities to our children at some of the most important times of their life. I've been saying a few times tonight, we know the science of what happens in those little brains at zero to five. And you guide them in that discovery um, Taylor put it as uh, being alongside them as they learn. Uh, you encourage them to explore the world. I know you're metaphorically and literally picking them up when they fall down. And I know that, that when you do that, you are also lifting up the communities and the families around them. A few weeks ago at the EL, or at ECEBC conference, um, Elder Shane put it this way. He said that uh, you are helping children become human beings. And that is such powerful work. That framing of this work really stuck with me. And for far too long, your field was not seen as the educated, skilled profession that it is, recognized as being essential for communities and families. And we uh, are committed to that. I'm committed to that. I feel a personal responsibility to continue to lift up and recognize this sector uh, and the educators, the child care providers who, who do this work. So to better support you, we've been uh, helping with the wage enhancement, uh, providing better access to education and training opportunities, professional development. And uh, I had a chance to talk to a couple of you about how you've taken advantage of, of the ECE bursaries or the um, different ways to become educators. Um, and we've come a long way since 2018, but we have a long way to go, a long way to go to make sure that you, our early childhood professionals, are uh, recognized uh, for who you are, the skills you have, the education you have, and what you do in communities. 
we're going to have more to say on that uh, in the coming months. Um, but just to, to say that as minister, uh, I truly have the privilege and responsibility of working to support you and to ensure that communities around the province know what you do for kids, for families and communities. And one of the ways that we are promoting child, uh, child care professionals and the vital work you do is by dedicating May as Child Care Month. It's a special opportunity to recognize your hard work, to celebrate the integral role you play in supporting children, families, communities, and holding up the economy. <laughs> you know, I, I think uh, that for anyone who didn't know the role of child care in uh, lifting up kids and the economy, the pandemic was a reminder. I was saying my kids were three and five at the time. I knew. <laughs> We uh, received many incredible uh, nominations this year. And I wanna offer my heartfelt gratitude and appreciation to, to everyone who was nominated and everyone here this evening um, for your hard work and dedication. I do wanna thank all the nominees and all the folks who put forward nominations. Uh, really incredible to read about the work that's happening across the province. And now I'm thrilled to begin presenting the awards to the winners who are here in this room. Again, standing out among really, really significant uh, nominations this year. So up first we have our regional awards of excellence. And uh, our first award this evening is regional award for excellence uh, in the interior. These regional awards recognized child care professionals or teams who demonstrated excellence in child care priority areas. Priori priority areas including working collaboratively with others, ensuring inclusion and encouraging diversity, and supporting community efforts and continuous improvement of child care practices. For the category of uh, interior region, I'm so pleased to present the award to Gent. Jen Harrison, who is accepting the award on behalf of the Kootenai Family Place in Castlegar. <laughs> Hold on, I've got more to say. I've got more okay, to say. Okay. You stand for a minute. <laughs> Uh, Kootenai Family Place has been helping rural West Kootenai residents since 1972, while still being an innovative provider that keeps up with developing needs of a growing and changing community. They regularly collaborate with local organizations such as schools, local indigenous knowledge keepers, and among, among others to bring diverse range of programming to children and families in the area. All of Kootenai Families Place's early learning and childcare facilities are fully inclusive to make sure children can access the necessary additional supports. They encourage family diversity, diversity of traditions and backgrounds, and ensure that these are shared and celebrated throughout all initiatives. One parent stated that, quote, their child thrived at Kootenai Family Place and that the children were cared for not just by professionals, but good, loving people. On a personal note, I've had a chance to learn about Kootenai Family Place from the province's Minister of Finance, who is the MLA for the area, and she is so immensely proud of you for this award. Congratulations to Kootenai Family Place. Thank you. Um, I just wanna say, um, on behalf of everyone at Kootenai Family Place, we're so proud to have received this award. Um, we've got great staff, um, especially our director of child care, Sally Bucheco. She's worked for Kootenai Family Place for 38 years. This is really more about her than me and her staff, um, but I'm, I really appreciate it. And I want to say I, it's so nice to see people gather to celebrate the important work of early childhood education. It's, it, it really makes me happy to see everyone here and know the good work we're all doing. Thanks. Thanks, Gent. And to, uh, I think the way that Gent put it, to have folks gathered to celebrate childcare and professionals in the sector, 
I was uh, just at a round table in Abbotsford and one of the things that folks were raising is that, you know, when they started in the field, nobody was talking about childcare. Folks weren't uh, having community round tables around it, celebrating, you know, and again, we know what difference you make in the lives of children and family. So we need to talk about it, we need to celebrate it, we need to support the sector. I'm now thrilled to introduce the winner of the Regional Award of Excellence for Vancouver Island. The, the winner of the Vancouver Island Regional Award is JLC Victoria. And uh, a, I'm not sure, Inoue? Eiko Inoue? How'd I do? I'm sorry, I should have come to your table first to, to check. You will be accepting the, the award this evening. Come on up. J JLC is the only Japanese immersion preschool on Vancouver Island. Since opening in 2018, JLC has continued to expand and improve its preschool program. In 2023, GLC, JLC Victoria began offering infant and toddler classes in both Japanese and English to anyone interested in learning Japanese language and culture with their children. One grateful parent of a two-year-old child states that JLC preschool program made it not only easier, but also enjoyable for children and parents to learn and maintain Japanese language skills. While programs are delivered in Japanese and children are introduced to Japanese culture and tradition, the curriculum also focuses on exposing children to traditions from around the world as well as local indigenous culture and history. Congratulations, and I'm pleased to present this award. Please, come on up. Thank you very much. Um, it is with tremendous honor that I'm receiving this award um, for my team. And first, uh, I would like to thank my coworker, Yuri Pomeroy, who is with me tonight. And it also hope for all my team and members in Victoria, um, you know, without their dedication and then also love for children. I wouldn't be here receiving this award for them. And it's been five years uh, since we opened our uh, preschool, but now that we have a infant toddler program and then also after school program, and then we are so happy that we have, uh, uh, we can see that our graduates you know, um, growing with our fun program until like they are 12. Yeah, so I will keep working uh, to make sure to establish the solid foundation for this um, unique and very beautiful childcare community for years to come. Thank you very much. just invited myself for a visit. I, I, I represent the community of Victoria Beacon Hill, so I'm, I'm gonna come, come see JLC Victoria. Now I'd like to present the award for regional awards of excellence for the Fraser region. The Fraser region award goes to Charlene Waydell from Métis Nation BC. Charlene has dedicated the past 33 years to serving children and families in BC in the childcare sector. She goes above and beyond to supporting families, uh, sorry, families, children, and communities, and educators to be their best by improving and enhancing relationships. As the executive director of Métis Nation BC's Ministry of Education, Charlene supports the mandate and the vision of early learning and childcare where Métis children and families throughout BC are provided with culturally relevant, self-empowering early learning and childcare programs. A colleague describes Charlene's passion and dedication for her role as second to none. She says, quote, she gives 100% in everything and her contributions are immeasurable. A big congratulations and Marcy to Charlene. 
She could not be here with us, but she would like to share a few words via video clip. Good evening, everyone. I wish I was able to join all of you in person. I actually think I would be much less nervous speaking to you face to face than doing this in a recording. <clears throat> in person, I would be able to celebrate and recognize all of the amazing early learning and childcare professionals and their contributions in the province of BC. Congratulations to all the award recipients and nominees. I'm extremely honored to be receiving this award. I'm grateful for the recognition I've received for my work because I'm very sure that every nominee for this award was as capable, if not more, of winning this award. I would not be in the position to accept this award without the inspiration, passion, and hard work of my amazing team at Métis Nation British Columbia and the leadership and heart of Métis Nation British Columbia's Minister of Education, Deborah Fisher. Without them, this work would not be possible. I raise my hands to all of them, as I do to all of you. I value and appreciate our partnerships with many of you across the province and understand the importance of collaboration and sharing and working together in order to create and enhance early learning programs and supports in BC. As we strive to achieve increased access to affordable, high quality, flexible and inclusive early learning and childcare programs and services. We truly are stronger together, especially for our Métis children and their families, creating programs and services that are anchored in Métis culture and responsive to the unique needs of Métis families. We need to listen with an open heart to the needs of our families and children. As an early childhood educator for 30 years, I've seen considerable progress in the childcare sector. I look forward to the continued work we do together for the childcare system BC families want, need, and deserve. Once again, I thank you and have a wonderful evening. Good to have her here with us in spirit. Next up, Regional Award of Excellence for the Vancouver Coastal Region. I'm pleased to present the award to Violet Jessen from Capilano University in North Vancouver. Violet has been a leader in the childcare sector for over 20 years. She has been a faculty member of Early Childhood Education Department at Capilano University since 20, 2002, and she was instrumental in developing the degree program. Violet has shaped and advocated for student teacher education, the professionalization of early childhood educators in BC, and has strengthened community networks of support for educators, children, and families. Violet is also a connector and a colleague, and it, she's a connector and a colleague attests to her strong leadership that has uplifted the professionalism of early childhood educators. Through her dedication to building and bridging relationships, strong and interconnected networks of ECEs have formed both locally and in, in, locally in North Vancouver and provincially within the many communities she has reached out to. Congratulations, Violet. Please come on up. short. <laughs> um, I just, um, I really wasn't expecting to say uh, any words, but I do have some. So thank you, uh, Minister Lor, for, for hosting us tonight, and really thank you for, for these awards. And I'm so um, honored just to be amongst so many 
um, dedicated, committed um, ECEs. Um, I am also, one of the other hats that I wear is I'm a chair of the Early Childhood Educators of BC, and we had recently written a position paper about the role of the educator um, in, in British Columbia. And so I just wanted to read just a really short piece out of the paper because it really speaks to, to the work that I've done and really trying to elevate sort of the work that we do and, and the kind of um, student educators that we're trying to graduate and that those are the ones that are going out into the field and to really create creating such um, beautiful spaces for children. So out of the paper here, it's um, that educators, they practice with ethical commitments. So educators practice with ethical, situational, and relational commitments as they negotiate tensions, contradictions, and vibrant possibilities that arise in pedagogical work. Ethically intervening requires educators to pay attention to the ethos, the ways of life, um, of their con context in order to foster more just and equitable forms and, um, sorry, uh, equitable forms of pedagogical practices with children and families. Educators do not follow altruistic or utilitarian principles, neither do they assume a normative morality nor a risk management approach. Rather, ethics is a doing and practice that occurs in the complex relationships and vibrant possibilities that are part of everyday life. Educators practice with ethical obligations that do not involve the application of a predetermined answer. These are responsive commitments to act towards a situated vision of a world that sustains life for all. Thank you. I guess I'm tall. <laughs> Congratulations, Violet. I'm uh, so grateful for the learning that I have done uh, through ECEBC, uh, and I thank you so much also for your role in that organization. And last but not least, uh, we come to the Regional Awards of Excellence in the Northern Region. The winner of the Regional Award for the North is Julie Hutchinson from the YMCA of Northern BC in Vanderhoof. Julie started working at the YMCA Vanderhoof Care and Learning Center in 2016. She actively works alongside the Child Development Center and all of her families to ensure that each child is treated as an individual and is supported through culturally competent practice and in the inclusion of indigenous language and culture. One parent of a child with support needs commends Julie's way of, quote, making children feel special and comfortable. She also values team building and engagement and brings her team together often to connect and work collaboratively. Julie could also not be here with us in person tonight, but would also like to share a few words through a video clip. Oh. You'll have to hear from Julie another time. <laughs> um, I think we can still give her a round of applause. can share an applause to show our appreciation and uh, I look forward to having a chance to connect with her and, and share your warmth and applause. We have more winners to celebrate and uh, we're going to move to the Innovation Award. The Innovation Award recognizes a child care professional or organization that puts unique and creative ideas into action to benefit children in the child care setting. I am pleased to announce that the winner of the 2023 Innovation Award is Wendy Flagall from Kamloops Christian School Early Learning Center. <laughs> Wendy has been working in the childcare sector for over 20 years, 27 to be exact, I learned this evening. At KCS Early Learning Center, Wendy has made numerous unique additions to the preschool room, including many she has made herself, which combines her passion for woodworking with her experience as an educator. Some of the highlights include both indoor and outdoor full-size play structures for imaginative play and gross motor, gross motor movement improvement, as well as play items such as wooden or felt letters and a light table. She also values nature-based programming, which has led to the design of an incredible outdoor space. Her students describe her as kind, gentle, patient, and loving, while her colleagues have added unassuming brilliance, humility, and compassion. 
Congratulations, Wendy. Come on up. Um, thank you very much. I'm very honored to receive this. Uh, and I work with an amazing team and a wonderful director. And we all work together. And it's great to have such a supportive group that we're a part of. So thank you. <laughs> Unassuming brilliance and compassion. <laughs> thank you, Wendy. We now come to our leadership awards. And the leadership awards are given to educators who embody leadership by encouraging and guiding others, displaying exceptional dedication, collaborating, and offering creativity and vision. These award winners also accept or seek leadership responsibility when opportunities arise and take action to improve existing practices or create new opportunities in the field. First up is the Emerging Leadership Award. This award recognizes childcare professionals new to the sector with a maximum of three years experience. The recipient of the 2023 Emerging Leadership Award is Amy Mueller from Vanderhoof. <laughs> Amy started working for the YMCA in Vanderhoof in 2020. She actively seeks out ways to enhance childcare programs through outdoor time educational sensory bins, adventure walks, and more. Amy cultivates and maintains relationships that encourage communication between families and the center, which then strengthens the quality of care that children receive both inside and out outside the childcare setting. One parent praises Amy's patience with her son, as well as Amy's uh, ability to recognize the child's development needs and to help him grow. Being new in her leadership role, Amy is actively seeking out opportunities for growth and to expand her leadership skills. Congratulations, Amy. I'm excited to see where your career as a childcare professional takes you, and I know that people like you are so needed in this sector and make all the difference to families. Come on up. So I wasn't actually planning on speaking, so <laughs> this is going to be very short. I'm not going to be near as eloquent as those before me, but I want to say thank you to my mentor, Julie Hutchinson, who could not be here today. Without her, I would not be where I am. She seen something in me that I hadn't even seen and supported me through my journey from sawmill to childcare leader. I'd also like to say thank you to my husband for supporting me through my career change. And thank you everybody. Have a good nice night. Thank you, Amy. The next category is Child Care Leadership Award. In addition to what I've mentioned for both leadership awards, the Child Care Leadership Award recognizes a child care professional or organization that has shown leadership in their community with families or with underserved or vulnerable communities. This year, we decided to present the award to two recipients as there were many outstanding nominations that were deserving. Our first Child Care Leadership Award is Karen Lesage from Ridge Meadows College. Karen has won this award not only for her work directly with children with diverse needs, but also for her critical role of educating our educators as an instructor and program chair. Since joining Ridge Meadows College, Karen has led a complete curriculum refresh, a partnership with Katsi Nation to incorporate Indigenous content throughout the curriculum, and oversaw the hiring of more than 15 new faculty members. She takes a personal hands-on approach with her students, assisting them with professional and personal issues whenever possible, 
And Karen has also put supports in place for neurodiverse students. A colleague states that Karen, quote, makes quick connections with children with diverse needs and finds unique ways to support each of them individually. Her personal background and her work as a supported child development consultant for 17 years has provided a unique lens for her to guide her teaching methods. Karen's enthusiasm, integrity, and knowledge has been instrumental in refreshing Ridge Meadows College's ECE program and to supporting students, children, and families in her community. Karen, I have to say I was very struck with how you described uh, encouraging and setting up your students to join this, this profession as a serious profession that is so impactful and to really lift them up as they view themselves in that role. Um, Karen, come on up. I as well was not prepared to speak. <laughs> I can talk about child development, no problem. This is a little different. So I'm very honored to receive this award and I'm very grateful for my team at Ridge Meadows College and supporting me with all the changes, working together to create a better program for our ECEs coming into the field. And I am very honored and have immense gratitude for all the childcare providers I've worked with over the years the families and children who have changed my practice and have taught me so much. I think I've learned more from them than I ever learned in my post-secondary education. And I am so honored to be in this room with some familiar faces and some new faces. So thank you very much. Our second recipient of the Child Care Leadership Award is Raquel Patrick. She is being recognized for her outstanding service to the small community of Nkwatkwa First Nations. I do, how did I do? Good. <laughs> she started work for Nkwatkwa Child and Family Development Center in 2020, where she has shown exceptional dedication and leadership. She has brought her experience as a primary school educator in the Philippines to a small community in and surrounding the Nkwatkwa Nation. She's described as creative, energetic, and empathetic, empathetic, that was coming out wrong, child care professional who, even though she did not grow up in the community, has engaged in cultural learnings with enthusiasm. She can often be seen speaking, oh, I'm not, can you help me out? Oh, commute. Singing the songs and sharing the stories in her classroom. A grateful parent states that she is quote, caring, nurturing, and is a positive influence during an important time for children's development. She provides exceptional service and support for families and her colleagues. Congratulations. Being nominated is really something for me, but accepting this award is a big honor for a Filipino who is working in a remote area in Canada. In behalf of my community in Kwakwa and our daycare in Kwakwa Child and Family Development Center, thank you so much for appreciating our effort and our role in the community. Have a nice night. We are coming up to our final three award categories for tonight's ceremony. The next award is the Inclusive Practices Award. This award recognizes a childcare professional or team who has shown excellence in providing truly inclusive care for children with support needs, as well as displaying leadership and cultural awareness in providing a learning environment and program that is truly reflective of the diversity of the children and families participating in it. The winner of the 2023 award is Little Badger's Early Learning Program, located at on Akis Kinook. 
at Kiss Canuck, thank you, First Nations in Windermere. Carrie uh, Rickards and Evelyn Walker, but Evie, right, will be accepting the award this evening. The vision of Little Badgers is, quote, building and creating a society to foster and promote lifelong learning and cultural connection to all living things. The center excels in providing an enriched environment for children with diverse needs and backgrounds. This includes connecting with families and the community through family after hours events, communal food events, field trips, and bike rides. One grateful parent of a three-year-old child with support needs states that the staff at Little Badgers have, quote, made every effort to accommodate the child's condition, including programming modifications. Little Badgers is also a $10 day childcare center and excels at recruiting and retaining ECEs through their professional development opportunities and employment packages. Believe me, I was taking notes earlier when we were chatting. Congratulations, come on up. On behalf of the Eva Joseph Learning Cultural Society, which runs Little Badger's Early Learning, um, we just want to say thank you. This is quite an honour. Eva Joseph was an elder um, on, from the Kiskanook First Nations community, and her vision was everybody should learn. Everybody should learn the culture, everybody should learn the language, but celebrate who you are, and that starts in the early years. So. Uh, Thank you to everybody for recognizing, and it's a great legacy for, for Eva and um, the Akiskanuk First Nations. We have an amazing team, and if, I'd, uh, hands down, the work that they do every day is amazing, and thank you for recognizing the hard work. Our next award for the evening is the Lenora Pritchard Award of Excellence. Lenora was a beloved child care advisor with the BC Aboriginal Child Care Society and a member of the Musqueam Nation and the Shimsham Nation. Lenora worked as an early childhood educator in communities throughout BC and general, generously shared her knowledge with other ECEs. Lenora passed away in an accident in 2009 and this award honors her legacy. The award recognizes an Indigenous childcare professional who demonstrates passion and commitment to their role. This year's recipient is Taylor Parker from the Comox Valley Aboriginal Head Start. <laughs> Taylor is of Métis background and is deeply committed to helping First Nations and Métis children with their education. She demonstrates kindness, compassion, and leadership qualities as a new childcare professional. A colleague praises Taylor's, quote, unique and culturally diverse activities for children. Taylor regularly goes above and beyond for children and comes up with creative and innovative ways to learn. I was struck, Taylor, by your description of learning alongside kids and what pulled you into the sector. Congratulations, come on up. Thank you so much. Thank you for all being here and acknowledging the hard work that the ECs are all doing in our communities. Um, thank you to MNBC for helping me get through a lot of my schooling and to ECBC to also helping for a lot of the problems that come along with schooling and great, it was very great. 
Uh, I work at Aboriginal Head Start, which is an amazing program in our community. It's a free program, and we can reach up to 40 children a day. Uh, I'm currently next week going into the leadership position and going to be running it, and I'm very excited. I'm Métis, and it's been really, really amazing being able to go and learn about the culture from the elders we have in the program and just dig deeper into the different cultures we have and everything, and it's just a really amazing family that we have there, and I'm really thankful for my boss for nominating me. I wish she was here tonight, but she's about to pop out her own baby, so she couldn't travel. <laughs> But she's been an amazing mentor, and Aboriginal Head Start has been an amazing place to work, and I'm so grateful and thankful for everything that they've done for me. And yeah, get a casca. Thank you. Thank you, Taylor, and congratulations for taking on the leadership role in the program. We now come to our last award of the evening, which is the Lifetime Achievement Award. The Lifetime Achievement Award recognizes a professional who has been a leader in the sector for over 20 years with an established history of distinguished service. The winner of this award embodies leadership by encouraging and guiding others, displaying exceptional dedication, collaboration, creativity, and vision. They have also, oh, sorry, it's a long list of things you've done. I thought I was rereading something, but it's more good things. They have also established a lasting contribution to child care practice, which demonstrates knowledge and skills that provide or support high quality child care. The winner of the 2023 Child Care BC Lifetime Achievement Award is Connie Byrne. <laughs> Connie started her career at the YMCA in 1990 and began her leadership journey in 1995. In 2007, Connie became the senior educator at Bob and Kay Akel's Nanook House, and in 2021, she transitioned to Metrotown YMCA Childcare as the team lead. A colleague notes that Connie, quote, thrives when helping others to step out of their comfort zone and em embrace different perspectives. Everywhere she goes, Connie has created a sense of home where all are welcome. She has fostered this feeling through the building networks to support families who are struggling and ensure children are supported beyond the hours of the child care program. Connie also works tirelessly to incorporate truth and reconciliations in her programs, partnering with elders to create culturally safe spaces and programming and ensuring continuous connection to community. Connie has coached new ECEs, guided mid-career mid child care professionals through growth opportunities, and demonstrated remarkable dedication to the children and families she serves. Her role as a workshop facilitator, mentor, and partner in training specialists is a clear example of the legacy she continues to create. Her vision for excellence over a 30-year career has inspired individuals of all ages to be the best they can be. Congratulations on your achievement, Connie. Let's uh, welcome her to the podium to share a few words. I as well was not prepared to speak, but I just want to, I know I'm short too. <laughs> Um, just, I've had the honor and privilege of working with so many amazing mentors, um, and they've shared with me all their teachings from the managers to the staff to the children and families. It's just with great gratitude that I accept this award on their behalf as well. Thank you. I'm just going to make an ad hoc observation. Every single one of you recognized your mentors and your teams. Every single one of you spent a bit more time talking about the others around you than your own accomplishments. I just want to express my deep gratitude to you as individuals, you as people who have changed the lives of families and the children in their care. And I uh, ask the room to one more time give you all a very Big applause. Applause. 
your commitment to children throughout the province makes such a big difference and your passion for your work is clear. It was clear in the conversations I had a, a chance to have with you at tables over dinner and dessert. Without you, children would miss out on opportunities for learning, for social emotional development, and for the play that benefits them so much. At the same time, their caregivers would not be able to pursue work or education or other opportunities. Our families, communities, and the economy are stronger for the work that you do every day. As Minister of State for Child Care uh, and as a mom, I want to thank you again for your hard work and care. And uh, please, one more round of applause. <laughs>